Hi friends and welcome back to Michelle Gay Science Teacher where all things are about science. Today we're going to have fun talking about parachutes. What makes a parachute land safely? We're also going to take a quick review over the atmosphere. If you're interested, then stay tuned to this video so that you can learn more about two types of forces that affect the parachute. I am using a kit from EIE. EIE is Engineering is Elementary. It is a group out in Boston, part of the museum, where they offer curriculum in the field of engineering. They provide kits on parachute flight, um, light, uh, I have one kit that we did was the oil spill that I conducted with my students. Another kit that I used last year with upper grades, fifth grade, was called an antivirus where students had to make an antivirus to fight against the virus that was polluting the United States. So they have so many fun kits and in these kits, these kits provide the materials, the outlines, the lesson plans, the resources for the students and it always provide a way for students to use design engineering. I will leave a link below so that you can check out EIE. Alright, so let's get back to today's lesson. We're going to talk about the atmosphere real quick. Remember that Earth has an atmosphere and it is a very thin layer that surrounds the Earth. And of the atmosphere, there are four layers. There's the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Why do we need an atmosphere? What does the atmosphere protect us from? Think about that. The troposphere is where we live and where, where all weather occurs and where airplane cruises. The stratosphere is the next layer. This is where um, skydivers jump from the plane from their parachute, a little bit above the troposphere. The mesosphere is the coldest sphere, and the thermosphere is the hottest sphere. Now, we have a thin layer of atmosphere that surrounds our planet. Well, what if we were on Jupiter? What would the atmosphere be like there? Let's compare Jupiter to Earth. Jupiter's atmosphere is a very thick layer. It is made of gases, hydrogen, and helium. So, does it matter if it's a thick layer of atmosphere or thin layer of atmosphere when something drops through the atmosphere. We're going to take a look and I'm going to have you take make a prediction on if it matters if it's a thin atmosphere or if it's a thicker atmosphere. Will one of them slow down the descent of an object falling in the air? We have two containers. One is filled with water. We're going to call this one Jupiter because the water will represent the thick atmosphere. The second one is empty and filled with air. This is planet Earth. It has a thin atmosphere. We're going to drop a ball in each one. Which one Will the ball move the slowest in? The thin atmosphere or the thick atmosphere? Let's try it out and see. All right, we're 
we're going to test it again. All right, this is our second test. Look very carefully at the balls and the container. One, two, three. Did you say Jupiter? If you said Jupiter, you are correct. The ball took longer to fall to the bottom in the thick atmosphere compared to the thin atmosphere. Now, Okay, let's talk about the parachute system. There are two forces pulling on the parachute. Forces pull down the parachute towards Earth. And we know that force is called gravity. Gravity pulls everything towards the center of the Earth. All right? But the second force is air resistance, which is drag. Drag is the... Um, air that fills the canopy, which is the part of the parachute, the top part, and it resists free fall. That means the air is pushing up into the canopy, gravity is pulling down, and because the air is moving through the suspension lines, it's able to slow the drag down or slow the parachute down as it's landing. And so the parachute has three parts, the canopy, the canopy is what produces the drag. The suspension lines, which connects the canopy to the harness, and the harness holds the load. So, remember, the forces that are working together, gravity and air resistance. Let's explore. I want us to find out what types of materials will affect the drag of the canopy. Will the different types of canopy affect it? Will the size of the canopy affect it? Or what about the suspension lines? Do they have to be long? Do they have to be short to make it go slower as it descent down to the ground? That's where you come in. You're going to decide which type you would like to test. You can use a variety of materials. For instance, you can use newspaper, for a canopy, you can use three different sizes of newspaper, like 15 by 15, 12 by 12, 10 by 10, and then use the same length of the lines so that um, they would, you will have some variables the same. And so you could make your lines 24 inches long. And so you would need four lines per parachute. So you could do a big parachute and a small parachute and see which one would take the longest to land. Another thing you can do is take two different types of material. You could use newspaper, fabric, tissue paper, and you could compare those two. You could make both of them the same size, 15 by 15, and make the suspension lines the same length. 24 inches and then compare those two because there is a difference in the drag when you use different materials, different sizes, different lengths. Another thing you could do is just compare so let's get this one. Just compare the suspension lines. Take a coffee filter and cut your, get three coffee filters or two if you want to test two. Make one set of suspension lines 24 inches. Then make the next one 16 inches or 12 inches. And compare the two and see if the longer lines take longer or the shorter lines. I have a short clip of my students testing out different types of materials and different lines just to give you an idea what you're going to be doing.
friends, it's time for you to go out there and test your own parachutes. I know you're excited. You know what? You have so many different materials you can use. You can use regular paper. You can use um, foil paper. Whatever you have at home, use it and test. And for a weight, I just use this big clip. But you can use something else for the weight. Now, I bet you're wondering, does the weight make a difference when it comes to air resistance? Well, let's see. Now, you want to make sure, in order to be fair, that whatever you use on one as your load, make sure you use the same thing on your second one. But let's talk about air resistance one more time. I have two sheets of paper. Both sheets are the same. That means they have the same mass. I'm going to take one and crumple it up, and I'm going to leave one hole. Which one, if I drop them both, is going to land first? Based on what we've talked about, air resistance. Okay, let's drop. Did you say the paper would take the longest or the balled up paper would go first, the fastest? Yes, because when I dropped the paper, air went above and below to give that drag while gravity was pulling on it and it slowed it down. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button so you can get more fun engaging science videos that you can conduct at school or at home. Also remember, EIE Engineering is elementary. Thanks and have a wonderful day.